And if you don't have the agenda, um, it's in the chat right here. Actually, I'm sorry, Ron and I uh, prepped a little bit, but I think we failed to decide who is adding something to the agenda. So we might not have added our agenda item. Did you add it, Ron? Uh, you can you can feel free to add it now, and it can be first. That's fine. Sure. So what we thought might be helpful would be to talk about uh, some scenarios on. Uh, what uh, conflict resolution might look like in a world where we can find steering to the three responsibilities we talked about last week. Um, but uh, that's probably a pretty long discussion. So maybe we should uh, put that second after Paul's agenda item. Okay. Um, sorry, I have, I'm getting texts from a couple of people saying they're having trouble getting in, uh, but that's okay uh, since it's recorded. Um, yeah, so I had wanted to, uh, I had just wanted to close out discussion on, uh, on the PR that we have open. Um, we, we wanted to bring it to a vote in our next meeting. So I just wanted to make sure that there weren't any like outstanding things, uh, about the proposal that require further discussion. Um, and if if there aren't, I'm happy to move on to hear, uh, you know, hear what uh, Alex and Ron have brought. Um, okay, well, maybe we can return to that at the end as well, because maybe as we walk through the scenarios we're talking about, um, that might illuminate our opinion on voting in particular. Um, so, uh, Ron, do you want to kick it off or do you want me to start? Uh, I thought you were going to start us off. Um, sure. I'm happy to. Well, we thought it would be really valuable to spend a little time walking through some hypothetical conflict scenarios. So as a group, we can either identify problems with the narrowing steering committee scope proposal, or hopefully become much more comfortable with the proposal. And so as a quick recap, the proposal is to tightly constrain what steering is responsible for to just three things, just code of conduct, uh, trademark administration and advising the trademark holder and uh, reviewing and approving scope changes to core. And we thought that walking through these conflict scenarios would really help uh, illustrate how we imagine this working and why we see this as like a very open way of running the overall project. So it seemed like uh, a topical, mostly hypothetical, but perhaps not as hypothetical as others, uh, scenario would be functions. And so it might be interesting to think about what would happen if somebody proposes to bring a functions effort to Canadian. They build a demo, their demo looks cool. They bring it to, to the group, to the community and show off the demo uh, because they wanna get approval to start a working group. And the community is totally free to define the process for this. And the way that we're proposing steering would work, steering doesn't get to define what happens next in terms of how working groups is, is created or approved. But it seems pretty reasonable that at some point, the functions uh, working group proposal will come across the desk of the TOC. And the TOC is then free to deny or support creating a working group. The TOC's veto is absolute. The TOC's vote of approval is really their way of enabling an intent to investigate. Like not everything the TOC says can turn into a working group is necessarily something the TOC has to be 100% bought in on and sure of. Because if we really want to support innovation, we have to let working groups form to do exploratory ideas, some of which are going to work out and some of which aren't. And that's within the purview of the TOC to decide kind of what's worth experimenting on and what isn't. Um, and then once they give that approval, the working group is on its way and the onus is on the working group and the working group leads to show how great functions is gonna be. So they go off and build their code in, in sandbox, they write the documentation, they write tests, they write design docs, there's all this goodness. Um, and obviously as it's an open source project, uh, customers and vendors can participate in development with them uh, as, as it suits them, depending on the maturity of the working group's uh, project. Then at some point the working group decides they've got an other fact that they really feel should be in core. What, what do they do then? They bring it back to the TOC in order to see if the TOC supports that or not. And the TOC obviously can support or reject that notion 
And once again, the TOC's veto is absolute. So as I think uh, various people in the community have previously debated or proposed, um, it might be a good idea to, for the community to create a step outside of core as well, so that not every innovative effort has to shoot at getting into core. Perhaps one option would be to have a default distribution, which is what you get when you first go and start kicking the tires on Knative. Or perhaps there's another thing we can create, which is like a way that you can extend Knative without actually being formally part of core. Um, you know, that doesn't currently exist, but that would be up to the community to create it or not. I like the idea of having that as a target because I think if we set up that the two steps are sandbox and core, you in inherently set up uh, sort of adversarial setup with all the people who want to innovate in the project that they have to get into core in order to accomplish something. But having another place that things can land and be sort of more formally part of the project, I think is valuable. So I, I like the idea of a default distribution, but there's lots of different things we could debate here. And it's really at the end of the day up to the community to come up with the structure they feel is right. So if the TOC feels that uh, not even, not core and not default is the right place for functions, um, then it gets rejected. If they feel like core is not the right place for functions, but it makes sense the default distribution, it becomes part of Knative in the form of part of the default distribution or whatever alternative there is that we create. Um, and then finally, if they feel that it's really core functionality that any user of uh, Knative uh, would want and that any user of the marks would feel like they should obviously pass the conformance suite in order to continue having their access to the marks, then they could say, oh, this should go into core. And at that point, for the first time, this constrained steering committee that we're talking about, uh, you know, has to sort of give it their blessing. Now, obviously, in the real world, there's back and forth discussions. Some of the same people hold seats on these different committees. So it's not like the steering committee would be taken by surprise by this event. But at some point, functions comes to steering as like, hey, here's a thing we want to add to core. Um, and so steering's decision here has a few implications. They, if they decide to put it in core, they're really saying, that vendors who support the project need to sign up for the long-term maintenance of functions, that the conformance suite needs an upgrade path for people, and there has to be a way for users of the marks to know what their time limit is to meet the new conformance requirements in order to retain their usage of the marks. Because our assumption that the way we'll want to administer the marks is there'll be a conformance suite, and if you pass it, you can use the trademarks, and if you don't pass it, you can't use the trademarks. But now we're changing that conformance suite, so we have to have some system to let people come along with that change. There may be a vendor who, who doesn't want to conform to functions, but we're putting it in the core, and they're going to have to conform to maintain what they have. And so that's that's a, a weighty decision. Um, uh, can, and then, can, can we just checkpoint here? Because I want to make sure, I, I'm hearing a lot of information, just want to make sure that I heard you correctly, Alex. Is that okay? Sure. Um, so I what I heard uh, is, uh, it, uh, let me see if I can walk through it in order. There's a There's a distinction between creating a working group as like an exploratory body or investigative body that maybe turns into like a body that maintains a piece of software. And if I heard you correctly, you view that as a decision that the TOC makes like uh, uh, around okaying the working group with the knowledge that like creating a working group isn't uh, necessarily endorsing something for the scope or endorsing a piece of software that that working group would eventually create. But the first thing I heard is, is uh, uh, decoupling those two things and that the TOC has uh, approval or veto on creating working group. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's right. And I mean, the TOC and in general, the community are free to define the structure we think works best here. The goal is to support innovation. So if, if for some reason we wanna have like two classes of working groups and innovation group and a working group to distinguish between something that we still haven't said is gonna make it into versus something that we know is a permanent part. You could have different names for that or whatever. I'm in favor personally of less bureaucracy and less process, so I'd call it all working groups, but I don't really get a say in that because I'm not on the TOC. So that's in the TOC slash communities domain to figure out how to structure that. And similarly, you know, if at some point the project grows to a size where we feel that these aren't technical decisions, but are decisions that we want made by a different subcommittee, we've just created a new subcommittee that would run that, whether that was, you know, a proposed operations committee or whatever it was. But the goal here is to have the control of creation of working groups and funding like innovative efforts and ultimately deciding when those things should be in the default distribution. All those things should be uh, in community control, right? So the, the, 
that, that's the point of this constraining of steering functionality is to make sure that we can run the project openly and have people contribute in a meaningful way um, while not having every such contribution affect what it means to get access to the trademarks for everybody who wants the trademarks or affect what it means to be Knative compliant. Um, so uh, I think that the third point in this section here is that I think we steering should consider voting to be a sign of project dysfunction. Um, in practice, that means that consensus-based decision-making should be the norm. And so if functions comes to steering, and let's suppose Google is in favor, but someone else on steering is not in favor, that's not consensus. So while strictly speaking, the way the structure is set up, you know, Google has the formal veto, it's really steering that has the veto. And if steering lives by the principle that voting is a sign that things aren't working, that we aren't able to reach consensus, that we aren't able to find good solutions, um, then what that effectively means is that uh, steering as a group has the veto and, and it either gets in or doesn't if consensus can't be achieved. Um, so if I, could, well, if I could just replay what, I, what the next pieces were to make sure that I heard it correctly, is um, if we walk through like on the, the timeline of working group incepted to uh, something being added to the core scope, uh, what I what I heard was that um, that say that say that working group X is created and they make software component X um, and they do all the things to make X really good and have broad appeal that they're if if they want to um, uh, well there's two things here one is that uh, I heard a I heard a uh, a principle of like it's we don't want there to be an incentive to to legitimize things by putting them into the core. So like if we have something that's like that's useful but not in core, it's it's no less legitimate than something that is in core. But if it is in core, uh, there's maybe some additional expectations around uh, it has representation in the conformance suite, has representation in like a future like starter or default distribution type concept. But if, uh, if working group X wants to bring their piece of software into core, uh, I, I heard that the first gate to pass is TOC, and then the second it, gate is steering. And at both of those, there's a absolute veto, is that right? That's right. Okay. Because it doesn't make sense to, to me at least, I, I think I can say to us, it doesn't make sense to us to have a world where um, you know, steering reviews something before TOC has blessed it because TOC's veto is binding and is is first, therefore, right? Um, and so, yeah, it's the first gate is getting by uh, TOC. So I, th I um, think we have I think we have a number of hands up. Uh, can we take maybe a couple minutes and and drop? I have the like hands? two more sentences, and then I'd love okay. to open it up and we can go through the chat here. So the last two sentences right. are. Um, you know, if steering uh, supports functions being added to the core, then it gets added and the trademark users are notified that they have to meet new requirements to continue using the marks. And if steering doesn't support functions being added, they can veto it, but functions could still be sort of legitimized, to use your word, uh, by putting it into a default distribution or whatever other mechanisms we want to have to indicate that this is truly like a thing that we plan to support as a project long term. It just isn't a requirement to use the trademark. Um, and, you know, vendors should expect that not everywhere where they go, or customers rather, should expect that not everywhere where they go will the vendor necessarily supply the Knative functions because they're not required to in order to conform. So that's sort of the implication. Um, so uh, I'm, I think we should just start at the top here from the chat. There's quite a lot in the chat. Um, and Yeah, I would say, Alex, there are... Marcus and Jules comments are all around the same spirit. Um, and so you can, I think Jules uh, had one really well generalized one that I think covers most of them. Uh, so but, that's uh, great, but Evan was actually first with a question about conformance. Um, and so maybe we'll do Evan's questions on conformance and then we'll do Jules question on, I I'm think on B2. To, I'm, I'm happy to defer to Jules. Okay, well then, Jules, why don't you go ahead and express it verbally for everybody and then we can try to respond. Um, okay, um, so uh, I just wanted to be um, clear on what you were saying. Um, 
you were saying effectively everyone on steering has a veto because um, we look for consensus. Um, is it the case that in the failure case, as in when it does come to a vote, um, everyone's vote is equal, or does one vendor or a subset of vendors have an actual veto as well as a, a effective veto? Um, that, that's true with two important caveats. Um, so first off, uh, there's nothing preventing us from creating yet another veto capable body or giving veto power to every individual on the TOC or distributing vetoes as broadly as we like. So if the mm -hmm. issue is, for example, that we have vendor stakeholders, all of whom would like a veto, we could create a vendor subcommittee uh, of veto power and veto empowered individuals and, and have them also be a gate to approval. And that doesn't seem to be a problem. Um, and so that basically gives every vendor a veto. Or alternately, if we think certain individuals in the project should have that veto power as individuals, we could bless them. Or if we want, we could give everybody a veto. So yes, what you're right, it, you're right. What I'm proposing does not include those structures, but there's nothing to stop us from creating them. Um, and so that would be one possible workaround to that, that, that concern. Uh, okay, so um, I, I, I wasn't asserting that. I was, I was genuinely asking. Um, but so uh, to, 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 be, to be clear, then you are saying that at least in the formulation you're suggesting, um, we look for consensus, but I'll just say allow Google has an actual veto. Um, even if the steering committee attempted to vote another way, Google could veto the steering committee. Uh, right. right. That's the, the, the Actually, current structure to. Sorry, go ahead, Ron. Well, I was going to say that's that is the current structure, and there and and what it sounded like your question, Jules, was, and I just want to make sure that I'm understanding is so how do others attain uh, a similar veto so that, that they can? Okay, so so I misunderstood. Can you? It's uh, actually the other way up. Let, let, let me put it in a really awful way. Um, how yeah. does Google lose that veto? Let's say that Google doesn't contribute anything to the project for five years and everyone else does, right? right? Uh, at what point does Google not have a super veto that no one else does? So there, there's two so, ways I can imagine that happening. Uh, the first way is that at some point, I think we all aspire to this project growing big enough and popular enough and supported by enough contributors that we're all in agreement that we should move it into some kind of, uh, you know, other state from what it's in now. I, I hesitate to commit to what that state would be, but I consider that a very far future state. So I don't want to hold that out. It's a very like near term possibility because I think what has sort of shot Google in the foot in the past has been saying things like, oh yeah, we'll eventually contribute this to a foundation. I think that's probably still true. But I want to put eventually so far in the future that we consider that a fantasy because I think that 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 sort of intent has been over interpreted by the community as you know we should do that yesterday or two years ago or a year and a half ago and has really created a lot of emotion and bad feeling amongst everybody who's trying to build this baby out of something that is small and something that's big but that's one way for Google to lose the veto to try to answer your question how does Google lose the veto and the other way quite simply is you know people get irritated and fork the project there's at the end of the day it's open source to give everybody that security that 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 is the path of last resort i i consider that a terrible vote of no confidence in the leadership of the project but that is the other pathway could, could so you those just are the only ways i could imagine you go back <laughs> over the first the first pathway again i i'm just not sure that i caught everything that you said sorry well, let me give a, a hypothetical. So I personally don't want this. I want to be clear. Okay, let's, let me be clear. I personally don't want this. I don't know if Google might someday want it. But let's say that the OUC works really well for the marks that it holds. And a year and a half from now, Google's like, the OUC is awesome. We should put the Canadian marks into the OUC. And so then we as a project look at that steering advises that maybe I've been gotten rid of by then, so my opinion doesn't count. And then we, we decide, yeah, we'll give the marks to the OUC. So since the whole point of this veto is around protecting what it means to be conformant and what it means to use the marks, 
when the, when the marks are no longer held by Google, it doesn't make sense for Google to hold that veto anymore. And so whatever governance option that OUC offers us would be what we would accept at that point if we thought that was the right thing. So again, I don't personally think that's the right thing, but that's an example of how you know, the marks could move out of Google's control and therefore the need for veto goes away because the need for veto is, in my mind, directly driven by two fundamental requirements of the project. The first is that conformance ought to be the way you earn access to the marks. And the second is that uh, Google owns the marks and has to enforce and, and, and validate that people meet the conformance rules to get there, right? And so um, I felt like I had a third thing there, but anyway, whatever, you get the general gist. Um, I know Evan has had his virtual hand up for a very long time. Um, yeah, so um, some of the structures you talked about implied potentially governance changes to make the everyone gets a veto be more accurate. That feels like another piece of that first govern the trademarks piece is govern yourselves, so you know the rules. Um, if there were if there were a change um, that gave everyone on steering a practical veto, um, would that be one of your proposals? And then I have a second follow-up on conformance. Yeah, Evan, can you just repeat the question again? Um, yes. Um, I, I missed it. So um, the 214 PR that's being discussed for voting next week makes a series of changes to the governance. Um, what you've presented today is also practically a change to the governance if you want to say, hey, steering must make all decisions by consensus. Um, you know, and we're going to take out the current voting rules and the new voting rules are consensus. Um, and it wasn't clear if that was a proposed actual governance change or a we will treat objections as a veto um, when it comes to voting, even if there's no rule that enforces it. So, yeah, so, the, so Evan, I don't think the intent was uh, exactly that. It okay. was an expression of, we would like the steering committee for the three items that the steering committee is responsible for mm -hmm. to achieve consensus. And we think that's uh, a functioning, a well-functioning steering committee and uh and that vote should be a last resort um at all costs now if um if the fact that google has a majority on steering committee effectively means that in that last resort it has a veto that others don't we would be open into a governance change that you are asking about to um to, to give others a, a veto as well. Okay. Um, my second question was getting off of the governance question almost entirely. Um, mm -hmm. Alex gave a bunch of hypotheticals about granting um, explicit permission to use the Knative trademark based mm -hmm. on a conformance suite. Um, right. And you and I talked yesterday um, and I suggested this might actually be a more practical way to protect Google's investments. Um, but so far steering hasn't, um, under the current rules, steering could charter a working group or something to work on answering a bunch of these conformance questions. That hasn't currently happened. Um, but is that something that you're proposing? Yes, so I, I, think, I do think that. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. I spoke last, so. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to say the same thing, I'll bet. I do think that the right way to administer the marks is through a conformance suite. Um, but uh, it was my assumption that that would be something that would be spearheaded by the TOC or by the community. If, if no one else does it, then yes, yeah. so I think steering should step up and step up and try to make that happen. Under the proposed restricted steering definition, that's actually not steering's role. Steering doesn't get to propose a new working group. So like the way I would actually want this to work is that um, you know, everybody understands that we, or hopefully everybody agrees, first of all, that having conformance is the right way to administer the marks. And then therefore it's a priority to create a conformance suite 
and then understand what it means to keep it stable and then make that the, the way that we do it. The fact that we don't have conformance now, I think, is just a missing piece we haven't gotten to. And so hopefully that's something we can get to. But maybe as a potentially side thing, if there are people who feel like that's the wrong way to decide who gets the marks, they should probably speak up now or get us on email or something because that would be a surprise to me. I think that I th think that there is a little bit of a blind spot here, um, which is for serving, we actually have a um, conformance suite, but we don't have a set of rules that says what, what passing looks like, how often you need to pass, and what rights that grants you once you do pass. That feels like a discussion that would be more useful amongst a bunch of product managers of vendors than a bunch of engineers, mm -hmm. um, because it has substantial product implications. So I just want to add to that, that we had said steering had agreed, like, I don't know, time has no meaning anymore, months ago, that we would create a working group to work on that conformance process and address some of your issues by the end of the year. It was kind of a, like, we know this is a thing, but like, we have no you know, we don't have the resources to do it right now. So, but it was, so I, I'm just throwing that out there of like the questions and the stuff that you have and that you're thinking of, like, I think we had previously discussed that we would, um, you know, put a working group together. And I think you're exactly right that that's a working group that would consist of people that aren't necessarily on TOC or steering or whatever. It's like, you know, I, I think it's, it's a good, project for, you know, all sorts of different uh, users to be part of. So that's just my yes right. and. So, Maybe yeah, we should make a concrete place for this group and just get it going because it seems like the end of the year is around the corner. Um, yeah, so. isn't it? <laughs> so we've, we've got a few things that are in the chat here that I just want to make sure that we don't blow past uh, as we're having verbal discussion. Uh, let's see, I think Marcus, Ben, Matt, you've all commented in the chat. Do you want to surface any of that into the audio? I'm, ha I'm happy to. I just, I just wanted to point out that all these discussions, we're not asking what do our users need? What do our contributors need? What do we need to do to attract more contributors? This is all centered around what do we need to do to uh, protect our vendors or uh, like, you know what I mean? Like it, it's all corporate and politics, but like we're a community of users and contributors. They may or may not be vendor affiliated. Um, so it's just an observation that like, what does a community need? And is the community's biggest need um, defining who can use the Canadian trademark? Like, is that the biggest pain point we have right now as a community and that, that prevents more users from adopting us and more contributors from contributing? And I don't think so, but neither do I think that all those other more important needs are the purview of steering. That all those things you're talking about, which I think are way more important than this, and I expressed my view in our first public meeting that we shouldn't have public meetings on this because I felt it would waste the team's time on things that are not worthy of having the whole team involved. Um, you know, all those things can be done in parallel or irrelevant to this decision. This decision doesn't affect the community's ability to create an operations working group to drive conferences or do marketing. It doesn't affect the community's ability to go and start new working groups and, and try new innovative things. It doesn't affect our ability to move the project forward. This is, if we want to have a trademark that underlies our open source project and we want that trademark to be the Google owned mark, this is the solution to making that have a well-defined process that everybody understands and knows how to get access to that mark. If we don't want the mark, we can just fork and work off the fork, or we can just ignore this discussion and let you know let those steering mucky mucks do whatever the hell they want. We don't need to spend 50 people's time debating how the trademarks work, yeah. because I agree with you, Benjamin, it is not the most important thing, but that is what we're doing for the moment. Can I offer a way to slim down the problem space here? Um, I, think, I think putting uh, powers in the project into the hands of the community uh, around reducing the scope of steering. Like, I think that makes sense. 
um, it means that we can we can have more folks working on more things that are important instead of uh, mm -hmm. like fixing the bandwidth available to the people that aren't steering. I, so let me offer a hypothetical here. So say that uh, modular the details, and I think there's plenty, right? Uh, but modular the details, say that we did reduce the scope of steering to uh, what you all have proposed, and we use the model that is in the uh, community 214 proposal for determining how steering is composed. Is, is that operable? I don't no. think the model that's proposed in the PR fits with these responsibilities of steering. If we wanted to do something like create uh, a, new, a new steering that was composed that way, whose, whose job was fit for the purpose of, for example, having customers on the board, um, then that would make sense. Or if we want to take the existing steering and call it the board and make a new steering, which is this uh, community elected thing that is like an operations committee slash, uh, you know, marketing slash events type focus or community building type focus, we could do that. But the, for example, picking on the customers element specifically, having customers who can vote on whether or not something should be in the conformance suite and, and control who can use the marks, that doesn't make sense to me. You don't go and ask your customers what the, what the trademark is or what should define who gets to use the trademark. That is virtually strictly a vendor slash trademark owner type concern. And it doesn't make sense to include stakeholders who don't really have a stake. And we reduce the problem space further then and eliminate that variable. So uh, I, think, I think what you were responding to, Alex, is like the presence of the customer and, and user seats. Say that, say that we eliminate those and it's, it's uh, uh, all developer contributor seats, right? Um, is that operable? I guess I'm, I'm not sure what the value is that we're trying to add here. The, the way I understood the PR's proposal is that its goal was to enable the community to drive the project. The goal is alternative is also to enable the community to drive the project, except where it is like functionally just not feasible, which is to say the reality is that unless, uh, unless we either abandon the marks or unless Google gives up control of the marks, it's not really feasible to have individuals from the community dictate to Google what it can do, right? And so what I'm trying to do is create a structure that actually works in practice that doesn't create conflict and that still achieves the goal of the, uh, of the, uh, of the project. So Evan makes the point that it's hard for people not employed by Google to pour effort into boosting the trademark owned by Google versus the technology code implementation. Um, and so I, I don't really have an answer for that, except that I'm assuming that eventual scale will solve that problem with emphasis on eventual, um, right? So I, I have I'm, a question. Um, go ahead. What would a non-Google steering member be responsible for in this case with the reduced scope? Well, so the three items are code of conduct issues, advising on trademark, um, and actually approving changes to scope, right? So code of conduct, I think, is self-explanatory. Um, advising on trademark, it's still, like, ultimately the case, just as within any of our organizations, when we want something done that involves legal approval, we, within our organizations, form a group that makes a proposal to legal and hopefully get legal to approve or rubber stamp it, but then sometimes there's legal advice that modifies it. Steering as a whole would play that role and would, for example, be the group that would at some point advise Google that, oh, the trademark should be donated to the OUC or some other change like that, that would change this whole structure we're talking about. So the other members of steering uh, that are non-Googlers would be responsible for having a voice in when to do that. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, just as Google takes on an obligation to try to make sure that the conformance suite works and that these things are long-term maintained, the other members of steering have a say in what goes into the scope of core because they too are taking on that responsibility. So in our hypothetical of functions being added to core, we'd really like the reassurance that all the, all the people who are signing up for the long-term job of, of maintaining the core and maintaining the conformance suite are aware of what they're getting into and have a voice in whether they're signed up for that or not. So that would be so, the role of having the other vendors on steering. I want to I want to synthesize what I just heard. So um, 
I'm hearing, I'm a little confused because I'm hearing Google, Google as the, the trademark holder has an essential veto. So if I, if I think about however steering is composed, say that steering wants to add, let's call it component X to core that like ultimately since Google is the trademark holder currently that uh, steering is really advising the, uh, the steering isn't necessarily deciding to add that to the core. They're deciding to advise the holder of the trademark, which is Google about their desire to add that to the core. And Google has an essential veto over that currently because they hold the mark. So here's why I'm confused is I don't understand uh, what Google would lose by allowing compositions of steering where like Google may not even have any representation because they have an essential veto as the holder of the mark. Um, it, it, did I misunderstand something? And if I did, I'd love to know what. I think, yeah, so, so Paul, in, in your question, you're asking, hey, why don't you give up the majority and the effective veto on steering because there is one final approval at the Google level because you're holding the mark. So sure, I think so that's in close that case, enough. There would yeah. Be, so yeah. so um, for me, there are two. Oh, go ahead. Ron. Yeah, you had a chance to speak for a while. No, no, it's, it's all right. You're on a no. I I just wanted to understand that, but I guess it would mean uh, there'd be TLC level veto, steering level veto, and if steering uh, all agreed on something, but it still didn't meet with Google's needs, there would be yet another level of veto. Is, is that what you, you, that's what you're saying, Paul, right? And so Correct. Um, why not and leave I, it at that? Yeah, so and I think that that is, I think that's, I think that is, um, let, let me put it to you this way. I think that that, so here's a scenario I'm thinking about is like TOC says, yeah, we want to add it. Steering says, yeah, we want to add yeah. it. Google, tra Google, I don't know what part of Google, but like in, in whoever it is that's going to make it simple. Uh, feel the... Yeah, I'll make it simple. It's, it's Ron at Google. It's Ron so, at Google who's product manager over, a, yeah. uh, you know, a product set that, you know, to, to, to get back to what Benjamin was saying, because I thought that that's it. That's the one comment I agreed more than anything else. I care about the thousands of customers. And so Ron says, no, I don't want to add this to the scope because that doesn't make sense for my customers. I, th right? I think we're, Sorry, I Paul, think I, I want to finish. Yeah. I want to finish the, the example. Yeah. So say that, say that uh, TO says, TOC says we want to add component X to core. Steering says we want to add component X to core. When it goes through the trademark holder, they have a veto opportunity there and that could happen whether or not Google had representation on steering. Like we might get into that scenario in any event, right? When the, the lawyers uh, look at X or Y thing and they say, for reasons A, B, and C, we don't think that works in its present form. Uh, As a maybe, maybe it delivers some guidance back and we, we mutate the proposal, right? right. So um, I can decide to add I, creative I'm, lambda. The lawyers will probably tell us don't do that. Correct. So what I'm, what I'm asking is like, <laughs> if, I, it's not clear what Google loses if we if we have like yeah. a hybrid approach of uh, decompose the responsibilities of steering and empower the community, right? But also sure. have steering be elected and from the community and determined according to the mechanics yeah. that we have in the proposal. It's not clear what yeah. you lose. I, I think, yeah, I think I, 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 Say again, Alex? I think the project loses. Like I, what? I'm trying to create a structure here where we have control of our destiny as a project. At the end of the day, the people who we put on steering are still going to be, uh, if nothing else, the managers of the engineers who are investing their lives in the project. And they have a vested interest in seeing the project be successful. Steering, if we want steering to have a voice and have influence with Google's legal department, and steering consists of you know, four Googlers and three vendor seats as it is today, then all those people have a voice in where this goes. And we have real teeth when we advise legal because there's a lot of control for Google already implicit there. Imagine a world where there's no Googler on steering, 
we compose steering out of all elected seats and no Googler steps up for the election and there's no Googler at all. And that group has to go to Google Legal to get them to approve something. Do you think that body is really going to have a voice? Will the project actually be able to drive the changes it wants? If the change we want is to donate the trademark, will you see, will we be able to do that? It's, you're just setting it up so that this is a lame duck body that can't actually drive the decisions or where there's a single rogue product manager whose name is Ron at Google, who's decided his customers are special and they need something different than what you want. So all your stuff is out. Like let's not give away the power that we have in the interest of some democratic ideal that just doesn't work with the structure that we have. I mean, your, I, I, your I, I, audio I, broke up there, Alex. You might want to, you might want to okay. repeat that. Yeah. Or maybe he can't, so let's, because uh, his video went away towards the end there. Jules, did you want to, sorry, Paul, I was going to just let Jules speak while Please, Alex go is ahead. getting his connection back. Okay, I guess so. I'm a, I'm a good filler. Um, uh, I have to say <laughs> no, that. No, not as that, a filler. Um, that, um, has, I, I have to say that actually um, felt like a description of exactly the problem here. Um, because I, I think what was just said was basically, even if steering wanted to go in another way, um, unless they can convince the Google subset of steering, um, it's not going to have an effect on the direction of the project. And I mean, I think, I think, I think you may have accidentally summarized the problem that we have with this. I, I, I it wasn't on accident. I think that's, that's where we're at, Jules. I, I, no one is disagreeing with that. I mean, but but I mean, it feels to me like what, like Alex, what you just said was um, <laughs> was, was given the reality that Google has all the control. The only way for the project to have a say in its future is for steering to be non-representative um, to reflect the reality that the community doesn't have a say in its future. I wanted to jump in <clears throat> partly because I want to say something and partly I want to establish that I will be the screenshot for this video. Uh, as I am required <laughs> to be by law, I have worn my once a pivot, always a pivot swag. And uh, Ben, hey, send me your address. I'll, I'll send you some as well. Um, I think you, I think you earned it. Um, yeah, I wanted to I wanted to push slightly at the question of the trademark. Um, I think Alex is right in that Google legal folks would do their fiduciary as fiduciary, yeah, fiduciary duty as as lawyers working on behalf of Google to defend its interests uh, to the best of their abilities. I think that's fine. The thing to bear in mind though is that Google is within its rights essentially to covenant that trademark. Like donating to foundation is, is one very explicit way of doing that because it creates a separate legal ownership, but it can also basically bind itself publicly. Um, there's an argument to be made. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I dropped out of law school, but my favorite subject was trusts. And there is an argument to be made that we have a de facto unincorporated association. We have rules, we have voting procedures. Uh, we have things that we coordinate on. You can create an unincorporated association by saying, George, let's start a TV watching club. Like it just happens from the facts. And that typically speaking, since it's unincorporated, it has no legal personality. And so any property that's associated with that group is held on trust by someone, usually the legal owner. Google is at risk of being seen as a trustee. You buy the trademark, you have the legal rights to the trademark, but You've also involved yourself in an unincorporated association as a voting member. You've got rules that you participate in that we're debating. It could be made uh, an argument that as a trustee or that you have created a trustee relationship. You never have to say, I'm a trustee to be a trustee. It arises from the facts of the situation. Mm -hmm. And if Google has created a trustee relationship with the rest of the community, that's a problem for you. Your, your legal position changes from being the absolute undisputed owner, able to dispose of the property however you please, to a trustee relationship in which you own a fiduciary duty to the community, which means you cannot put your interests ahead of the people on whose behalf you hold the trust. Does that make sense? Again, I'm not a lawyer and this is not legal advice. It's for entertainment purposes only. 
<laughs> but I would caution, I would caution against taking the view that you have an absolute power over that trust. I, I would caution that your actions have possibly created the more complex legal relationship than you currently envisage in this discussion. I'm not a lawyer. I think it would be a step backwards for us to bring lawyers into this meeting. And I think this is the path of bringing lawyers into the meeting. I, I just wanted to bring it up. Can, can I float a, no, can I float a, a, a further uh, possibility here, like another permutation mm -hmm. that might help to bridge some of this? Sure. Bridging would be great. Seems okay. we need to. So, um, and, and there's probably like a number of different permutations that we could think of. Uh, I don't know if this is the perfect one, but just hearing the viewpoints present and trying to incorporate that. What if, what if Google were to retain like two permanent seats on steering and the rest can be elected? And in that way, we address the um, the uh, adding the 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 gravity to uh, our interactions from steering when we make recommendations around the the mark to Google Legal. And there's like there's no situation where um, where steering would make a decision uh, without having like a Google Voice saying like hey, this is what the lawyers are going to think. So we should tune X, Y, and Z thing about this. Is that workable? What's the value add of the elected seats? The value add of the elected seats is that we respond to the pretty clear community desire to have representation at the steering level that comes from the people that build the project. I thought that desire was based on the current responsibilities of steering. And so I was hoping that we would sidestep it by making the responsibilities so narrow that the reason to be on steering wouldn't be because you wanted a voice on steering, but would be because you had the authority to bind your organization to actually taking care of the conformance suite and taking care of ensuring that the things that we add to the core are maintained forever. Because to me, that's what adding things to the core means. When we add things to the core, we're committing to maintain them forever. And we're committing that they're a requirement for getting access to the marks. And so the people who are on steering should, should have those powers. And they don't need more than those powers or less. And those powers don't necessarily correspond to people who chop wood and carry water on the project, which I think is the most important qualification for basically every other role. So would it work? Uh, you mean, would I object to it? Um, I mean, I don't think that's the best structure, but if, if it was the case that everybody else felt that that was a far better structure for reasons that I don't perceive, you know, I could be convinced, absolutely. But I want to hear a real reason why it would make the steering committee more effective to, to help convince me, because I don't, I'm not convinced that it would be more effective. So it? What, what I'm interested in, in doing is finding a way to, uh, to, to bridge the viewpoints here in a way that means that we don't have to continue having these conversations and that the community feels like their voice has been heard and like there's representation at the steering level. So I think the value add of, of finding a workable solution is that we can, uh, we can put this matter to rest and we can move on and we can, we can concentrate both the steering and as the community on doing, uh, on carrying out like reduced scope of steering and increased scope of community responsibility in the project. That's what I'm interested in doing. So, yeah, so Paul, uh, me too. I think you've been part of this conversation about two orders of magnitude longer than I have. Um, so, and I'm, I'm beginning to empathize quite a bit um, because, you know, there've been a number of comments around these weekly uh, shows, if you will, um, where I, I think we're trying, we're all trying to make progress, but we haven't. I, I, I for one, I personally like your suggestion because I appreciate that it's in the spirit of let's find a way to move forward so that um, Alex and I can get the, can meet the requirements that we have. We can get better community representation in the leadership of the project. I think, I think the, the ultimate goal is to get leaders, uh, leadership in the project from the community. Um, and if you think that's 
uh, a way to bridge that gap, I think we should consider it. Um, I, I agree with Alex's sentiment that I'm not sure that I understand why that would make things better, but that doesn't mean we can't accept it. Um, I would like to make sure that we avoid this, this going around in circles for a long, long time. And, and so, uh, I, you know, with, with the five minutes that we have left, I, I think we should consider that, Alex, and uh, figure out if, if, if that's a way to find a compromise that lets us address the, the key things we want to be able to keep for the steering committee, that, that one focus and the last little bit that, that we need to be able to retain, while at the same time drive more of the uh, uh, community participation in steering. And I think I'll, I'll leave you with one last thought, Paul. I, I think what that starts to look like is the fact that we, we need a steering committee that is a steering committee for the K Native project. And what we're, what we're focusing here is actually the, the new definition of steering where maybe Google has two votes, but the veto and all, all of what you're talking about is actually more acting like a board than a steering committee more than anything else. Um, and, and that's what it starts to look like to me. So for example, the board at, at any corporation really has just one job to elect and fire a CEO. Um, and everything else is actually just advisory. So anyway, I, I don't want to get in, into a tangent. We should still call it the steering committee. Um, um, but that's, that's the thought you put into my head, Paul, as, as, as you were describing it. Um, I think I, I have some follow-up questions for you. Um, we, we don't have to do them right now. There are a bunch of other comments and we have only five minutes left. So I'll, I'll stop talking. Akron. Um, do folks, I see, I see there's a lot of comments on, in the chat. Uh, do we want to surface any of this into, yeah, into audio? Um, I, I take a crack at the reasoning because I, I think it's kind of simple. Um, I think I think it's pretty clear that we don't want a steering committee that only has Google on it. Um, and I think from what I understand, the other steering committee members don't want to do it anymore. They want to have a representative steering committee. And I think I've heard quite a few of them say um, that they would like to hand over that responsibility. So. We need to figure out how to have a steering committee that's not all Google, because I think everyone agrees all Google is bad. Um, it sounds like moving it entirely representative doesn't work. There is only one solution. So our, I can I can accept the solution where we have a bunch of elected seats on steering, um, because from a protecting Google's requirements point of view, it satisfies those things. It makes me sad because I don't think it's right for the project, but maybe I'm wrong about that. And, you know, we can always change things again later if we've made a mistake. Uh, we don't have to, like the things we do will always change year over year. So I don't, I don't, I don't profess to have a crystal ball on this. Uh, yeah, I mean, right. You're not I even think, visible think, right now. I think, Sorry, I'm, I'm, I think a lot of us would prefer it if it was an entirely representative steering committee, um, but it's clearly better, clearly in the right direction. So, An important part of this is, is that uh, the community needs to be happy with the outcome. So I'm trying to figure out how, how we Honestly, can... Paul, I think... Yeah. So, so the community is extremely frustrated right now. I, I, again, from the, the newbie in the room, the community is extremely frustrated. It's not going to magically just in one week be happy. Um, what I like about your suggestion is that it's attempting to find a way to start building some trust and, and building a good relationship um, from where we're at now. Yeah, I think, I think it, so it's one thing to talk about these things verbally, right? And uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a, a meeting where 
everybody was like, yay, we figured something out. Or they're like, oh no, we couldn't figure anything out. And everybody just had a different impression. So I think, um, I think it's, it will be important uh, to like get something in writing um, uh, to, and, and see if that's workable to folks on steering, see if, if that's workable for people in the community. Um, I'd love to hear from some other folks on steering, Brenda, Michael, April, any thoughts about, about this? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think this was a great discussion and, um, I, you, you, you hit the right point. I think we should put this in writing so um, all of us can look at it and hopefully next week we can, we can close this issue. I can take a stab at uh, either modifying the existing PR or making it, I think it might be easier to make a new PR based on it and then put in a comparison PR. Um, you know, I, I will struggle with it a little bit because I, I'm having difficulty understanding the value of the elected seats, um, but uh, we can do that. Okay. Um, I think, I think you're probably right about, it's probably easier to write a new PR and diff them. And, you know, you can PR my PR if we, if we find a, a reasonable diff or we can, we can look at a second PR. Do we think we would be able to have that PR out soon? Just so everyone has a, I think the rule is to like have a week, have it out for a week and then we can vote on it and et cetera. I probably can't get it out before the end of day tomorrow, but I probably can have it out before the weekend, which is not really quite enough time. But perhaps if next week we use this time slot, it get, it's close to a week. If I may add uh, one comment, given the context of the frustration signal from the community that might lead a project to a fork, which in sometimes can be healthy for the community, but not of the call them owners of fork projects. And, and sometimes it can turn out better for the owners of the fork project. I think right now the community needs a real uh, sign of goodwill from Google, an actionable, non-talking sign of goodwill. And if that sign of goodwill takes place, it might tone down this frustration signal from the community. And I think that's my understanding of what Paul was talking about. So it's not just about making people happy, but it's in the best interest of the project itself. So I, I would welcome your suggestions for Signs of Goodwill. I, I would love to chat one-on-one -on -one and hear your ideas. Um, in, in my mind, and this I think is a big part of the disconnect, in my mind what we're proposing is in the best interest of the project. It takes away all of the existing powers of steering that it doesn't need and gives them to the community, and it focuses steering on doing only the things that are essential to steering's function, and I think that's a, that's a big step forward. But I understand that other people don't see it that way, and so you know, it's obviously, I have some mistake in my point of view. Yeah, personally, the sign of goodwill that I'm talking about is Google giving up on some of the seats. So basically the proposal that um, Paul is talking about and opening up for an election in the steering committee. I, even if, Ahmed, even if I, and in that context. Sorry, I was just going to say, Ahmed, what I'm hearing is, uh, I, th I think I'm hearing you say what we've described seems like it would be a meaningful display of good faith and, and be a meaningful gesture. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. I want to make sure, though, that it's not an empty gesture, that we have a need to protect the scope and, and conformance. So that would not go away. But at the same time, the desire for community elected participation in that final process is meaningful. Is, is that what you're saying? 
I'm saying that if this one, like I am, I'm seeing this specific suggestion as a sign of goodwill that might help toning down the, the signal. And if Google wants to provide something, it should be something equally effective in toning down the signal. That's basically what I'm saying. Okay. Um, if I can, can sort of summarize my feeling on this. Um, right now, it feels like the community doesn't have a lot of trust in steering for two reasons. Um, one is the seats and governance thing that we're discussing here. And the other is that um, historically steering has not been able to make a lot of progress. And so it feels like if we could show some positive progress on the governance and then delegate hard problems, you know, steering says, well, we're actually going to pick on some other people and make them solve this. And they can have open meetings and steering can go back to, you know, arguing in dark rooms. Um, but the stuff that people care about, like trademark, is happening in an open room where everyone can participate. Um, that feels like it might let a little bit of the pressure out. Because it's clear that we are in a high pressure situation right now without a lot of trust. I'm trying to read the comments and they've gone past the. I am also reading the comments. Yeah. I think what we really need is to have this proposal written down. Otherwise, it's going to be an endless conversation about what ifs and ideas and so on. Yep. I think if we can get something really written down, a stake in the ground, then let's talk about that versus additional what ifs. Right. I think I took the eye to put up a PR by the end of tomorrow. Okay. Excellent. Thank okay. you. Okay. Let me just say this out loud as well. Um, I, I think the two seats approach is a solution. Um, there is another solution, right? Um, just I'm just going to say it out loud. Um, the problem seems to be Google needs a position on steering because it owns the trademarks and therefore Google's legal department needs to approve what happens to the trademark and therefore all the problems. That's easily solved, right? Um, that's how we're solving Kubernetes. It actually was how it was solved in this deal, not necessarily the foundation I personally choose. Uh, but there is an easy solution. The trademarks could be donated and the problem goes away. I mean, I do think long term that's probably the outcome that we want. But the, the problem is this disconnect between whether that's something we could do next year or whether that's something we could do in the next five years. So I, I almost what's, wonder what's if there's like another from... PR here. Sorry, go for it, Marcus. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, like, you, you keep saying that it's short term versus long term, but what's blocking it from happening next week? It, frankly, in my opinion, what we've built is not popular enough. It's not important enough. And it is, it is just not ready yet for that level of visibility. We have, we have a, a nice, you know, 120,000 lines of go code that provides some good value add on top of Kubernetes, but it's just not the same uh, level uh, as Kubernetes or Istio or these other projects that have been established and have a ton of usage. We're just not there yet, in my mind. So that kind of confuses me because I would think that if it's small, it's much easier for Google to say, hey, whatever, here, take it. Uh, I give it to this uh, foundation and uh, foundation runs with it. I don't quite understand why size of the project itself is in any way like related to if we donate or not. If anything, I would think Google would try to hold on to things that are bigger in size, much more than to things that are smaller in size. Um, I, sorry. I think the project needs more 
more stewardship when it's young than when it's established. Um, so, I mean, I don't have a better analogy than a parenting analogy. I guess I show the age of my white hair, but you, you, you take care of your kids more when they're young than when they're old. By the time they're teenagers or young adults, they're making their own decisions and are off and running and they're established. But when it's in the early stages, you know, we really could redefine what Canadian is quite dramatically because there's, it doesn't have an established identity yet. Well, I think we're on our way. Don't get me wrong. I think a lot of great things have been achieved, but there's work to be done to get there. And I think controlling the scope of what the brand means uh, will define it over time. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sensitive to the fan. fact that we're, I'm sensitive to the fact that we're over time now. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to reading uh, PR on by end of business tomorrow, Alex, but I think, think we are over time and uh, we'll have another meeting next week. So Jules, uh, is it okay if we, if we end it here? It's absolutely okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Cheers.